Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Clark, and I'm the I'm with the NOAA Central Library. We are very excited to host today's presentation, a comparison of four primary age-structured stock assessment models used in the United States, presented by Dr. Bai Li, Research Associate at the National Research Council. Uh, this presentation is part of the series National Stock Assessment Science Seminars, which is put out by the National Stock Assessment Program. Uh, before we begin the actual presentation, and I turn this over to Kristen Blackheart, who will introduce our speaker today, I just wanted to go over a few logistical tips to help you with this webinar. Um, if you're having any trouble with the audio or the visual components of GoToWebinar, please try logging out, then logging back in. Uh, this tends to uh, resolve most of the issues, but if you are still continuing to have problems, either let me know through the chat box on your screen or email me at library.seminars, plural, at noaa.gov. Uh, we'll also be accepting questions throughout the presentation today, uh, which the speaker will address the last 15 minutes of the, of the hour. So please feel free to type your questions in the chat box at any time during the presentation. We'll be collecting them. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that this presentation is being recorded and will be available on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel, as well as the Library Seminars website, uh, usually by tomorrow. So feel free to um, grab the, to go visit those sites and to forward this presentation to any of your colleagues you think might be interested. So with that, I'm turning the presentation over to uh, Kristen Blackheart, who will introduce Dr. Lee. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, before I introduce Bai for today's seminar, I just want to give a little plug um, for our next uh, seminar in the series. Um, today is part of a two seminar mini series uh, within our technical seminar series. Um, so our next date will be um, Thursday, August 6th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and um, we'll have Another speaker from the um, national modeling team talking about the metapopulation -popul assessment system. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bai Lee, who is a research associate from the National Research Council, supporting the national modeling team within the um, National Stock Assessment Program. She's been working on the model comparison project, um, focusing on um, examining the similarities and differences among various stock assessment packages to develop a framework that can be applied for other assessment model comparisons. So with that, bye, take it away. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lisa and Kristen, for um, organizing and uh, coordinating this meeting. Um, good afternoon and uh, good morning, everyone, depending on where you are. Um, I am the postdoc from the National Research Council, and I'm working with uh, Patrick Lynch from the Office of uh, Science and Technology um, for this model comparison project. Um, today, I'm just a presenter of this project because um, let me change the slides because uh, this project can um, not be done without the joint effort from five fisheries science centers and the ST office. So. Um, as part of this project, I actually had an opportunity to travel to four of the science centers um, and have some great experience to have discussion with the um, original model developers um, in NOAA and uh, get some uh, hands-on um, training. And luckily, I finished the, that part before the pandemic. And right now, we are this team are just having monthly conference calls among all the collaborators you saw from uh, this slides um, to discuss the results and to uh, draft a manuscript. Um, and for today's seminar, I actually plan to provide you um, some background on how we started this project and the goals of the project. And I want to introduce you um, the design of the framework, which maybe you could actually apply to your uh, own research and then I will summarize uh, the results and provide some uh, recommendations. Um, but before I jump into the co-comparison part, I just want to briefly explain a few uh, keywords from the title. Uh, we all know that uh, NOAA Fisheries conducts stock assessments to provide scientific 
advice for uh, sustainable fisheries management. But what is stock assessment process? Um, so a stock assessment is based on scientific processes of collecting fishery dependent and uh, fishery independent data for accessing species demographic information. And uh, stock assessment analysts conduct modeling work to quantify the effects of fishing and other drivers on fish populations. And they can determine stock status for a stock and the project future catch levels. And uh, the assessment results will be um, evaluated through the peer review process and uh, the management advice will be provided to uh, fisheries managers. Um, but for today's uh, seminar, I'm going to just focus on the modeling part. So stock assessment modeling is a very important part of the assessment. Um, it includes uh, model development, testing, and uh, application. It is also a process that scientists use a set of tools um, that have been developed in maybe various programming languages for a specific fishery. Um, and back to 1970s and the 1980s, the assessments conducted were typically based on virtual population analysis or surplus production models with uh, limited input data. But started in um, 1982, the trend in stock assessment has been towards uh, integrated methods. And these methods actually allow us um, having more and diverse data sets to be included in assessments. Uh, but when the stock assessments become more complex, uh, the technical skills required to apply modern stock assessment methods also increased substantially. Um, and also not just for the stock assessment analysts, but for the peer review scientists, um, if, um, the, if the reviewer is not familiar with the assessment method before evaluating the stock assessment, it will be a big challenge for them. So there is a need for um, the use of standard stock assessment packages than use of uh, stock specific models. And uh, the figure um, here actually shows a review work conducted by uh, Dichmann et al. They uh, reviewed 16 stock assessments packages in the United States. And they mentioned in the paper that using these packages reduces the time uh, it takes to conduct a stock assessment. And you can repeatedly use these packages for uh, many species. So um, that's the benefit of using a uh, uh, stock assessment package. But I think um, whenever there are multiple choices, there will be uh, comparisons. Um, it's, it's like when you have various models of phones in the market, um, you need to compare the features you need to compare uh, the pros and cons of um, the phones and find the phone that works for you. And similarly, uh, model comparison work in the fishery stock assessment field has existed for a long time. Um, the cover of this report um, here actually um, demonstrate that back in 1988, uh, there was already some age structure stock assessment models comparison work being done. Um, but there are multiple ways to conduct model comparison work. For example, uh, literature review. Um, you can do overview of uh, the development of a methodology. Um, you can try to do like what uh, the Ditchman uh, paper showed um, to overview minimum data requirements, key technical aspects, and outputs from different packages to distinguish the different packages from each other. Um, you can also try um, other comparison work that applies multiple assessment packages to um, the same observed data for performance comparison. Um, I, I have seen this done in um, regional fisheries management organizations. Um, for example, they use it to determine a base and alternative assessment models for a stock. Um, and another very common way of uh, conducting uh, model comparison work is doing simulation testing. So you can conduct uh, both self and uh, cross tests with folks on specific issues, um, for example, data availability and uh, model misspecification. And in 2013, 
um, there was a symposium as part of the World Conference on Stock Assessment Methods that compared methods based on simulation exercise. Um, Durova et al. have done self-tests and uh, cross-tests among models. Um, here I was I just want to show you that for a self-test, it means um, an assessment model is fit to the simulated data generated from the fit of the same uh, assessment model. For cross-tests, um, an assessment model is fit to pseudo datasets generated from the fit of a different assessment model. Um, and they found that lack of robustness in self-test may indicate bias, while um, lack of robustness in cross-test may indicate different structural assumption between um, estimation models. But um, all those models, all those model comparison works, um, they are basically aimed to make sure that scientists can apply the most fitted stock assessment methods when developing management advice for fisheries. So um, the question is, does our model comparison project share similar motivation with this existing uh, model comparison work or um, do we actually use similar approaches to compare the estimation models um, so now i want to just introduce you to the rationale of this particular project um, as you know um, NOAA fisheries actually conducts uh, annual stock assessments for marine resources using various stock assessment packages um, and the different regions uh, actually use different packages with consideration of the available data or uh, basically uh, based on the historical and the current culture of stock assessment practice. And in um, 2016, uh, one of the sitting senators actually asked a question to NAWA and say whether or not the model uh, used in different regions can produce similar results. Uh, because the fisheries actually rely heavily on reliable data and assessment models. Um, would the stock status of a species be different if the region decides to use another package? So at that time, um, NOAA actually responded by documenting which models are used for which assessment. Um, but what was really needed to be done um, is an exercise that answers the question whether or not models produce similar results if they are configured similarly, and what are the potential consequences if a region switches from uh, model X to model Y. So the initial rationale for this particular project is to be able to answer um, those external requests. And we also hope this project can uh, help us meet the NOAA internal demands um, for assuring the quality of uh, existing models. And we could use the comparison framework developed in this project as a test bed for um, evalu evaluating the performance for future models. And we also um, hope this uh, comparison work could help answer some specific questions, um, such as how accurately does the model represent reality for the quantities of interest um, for a broad, more broader um, scientific community. But what is the focus of our um, comparison project? Um, we are actually focused on uh, comparing age structure stock assessment packages that are uh, primarily used by NOAA fisheries. Um, so we compared the four packages in this study uh, one is assessment model for Alaska, developed by uh, Jim from Alaska Fishery Science Center, um, age-structured assessment program developed by Chris from uh, Northeast Fishery Science Center, um, the Beaufort assessment model developed by Eric and Kyle from uh, Southeast Fishery Science Center, and stock synthesis developed by uh, Rick from Northwest Fishery Science Center. And just by looking at the U.S. regions of use in this table and uh, um, the map here, uh, we can we can see that those small uh, these packages are actually being applied widely in uh, many places. And actually, in the past, um, there were already some comparison study have been done um, on, for those models uh, in terms of 
checking their uh, data requirements and outputs. But for this project, we actually aim to provide a rigorous comparison to improve our understanding of the similarities and the difference in mathematical and the statistical attributes of the packages. And the, uh, the key questions we want to address in this project um, are four questions. Um, the first one is, uh, what are the key features or uh, what are the source code need to be compared before we developing an operating model for the model comparison project? And the second question is, um, do the estimation models give uh, similar and accurate estimates under a range of uh, cases? And the third question is, um, what are the sources of differences in estimates, if uh, any? And the four, fourth question is, what recommendations can be drawn for future model development after examining the similarities and the differences of um, these estimation models? So here actually is uh, the general framework we designed for this study. Um, maybe it's a little bit difficult for you to look at the um, individual blocks, block here, box here, so, uh, but I will explain in details. So it includes a code comparison for um, key features in the estimation models and uh, an analytical comparison to mirror the uh, performance of estimation models by comparing the estimates with the true values from an operating model. Um, and uh, the first step is common feature identification. So this step actually helps us to identify common features from all four estimation models and helps us to develop an operating model with consideration of common features only. Um, and this table here actually shows a list of features we did co-comparison on. Um, and once we select a list of features for source code comparison, we went through all available um, options for each feature. Um, so that's the step two source code comparison. Um, in this step, for example, for the um, age model in uh, each package, we found that um, AMAC, ASAP, uh, and BAM actually model the population starting with age one, while the default in um, stock synthesis starts with age zero. Um, if we, so we basically would expect there are differences in results if the operating model starts with age one, but the stock synthesis starts with age zero. So what we did is we actually used some uh, special settings in stock synthesis. Um, to match the underlying assumption from the other three models and the operating model, um, just to minimize the bias introduced by input settings. Um, and also, uh, when we are looking at uh, these four estimation models, we found that not um, every estimation model has the recurve stock recruitment model included. So we decided not um, not test this feature in the comparison work, um, and we think it could be done through self-testing using a model that has this feature. So that's basically the first step and the second step. After comparing the key um, source code, we get a table like uh, this. It actually tells us the similarity and the differences among models. So some of the differences actually helps us determine the structure of the operating model. So for example, the stock recruitment model um, feature comparison can help us to determine the structure of the operating model. Um, some of the differences actually helps us to standardize input values and uh, outputs um, so we can minimize the bias introduced by um, analysts uh, for example, um, like the selectivity avail uh, available selectivity patterns. So all models actually have um, simple logistic function for the selectivity um, patterns, but the parameters are parameterized differently in um, the formulas in each model. Um, so, but they have the same name in each model. So the analysts need to be carefully um, convert the values for inputs and outputs uh, if they want to compare apples to apples. 
during any uh, model comparison work. And another one is an uh, um, outstanding difference we found um, that is related to bias adjustment in recruitment. So um, what is bias adjustment? In general, the difference between the estimator's average and the true parameter's value um, is the bias. And in stock assessment models, recruitment variability is usually um, assumed to be log normally distributed. And the log normal assumption um, calls for a bias adjustment in the model mean annual recruitment. And currently, AMAC and ASAP um, haven't implemented the bias adjustment in the models. So only uh, BAM and uh, SS have the bias adjustment feature. Uh, but one thing we need to note, we notice is um, they actually implemented the features in different ways. So for example, um, in BAM, um, it actually requires median virgin recruitment as input. And uh, um, in the stock recruitment, stock recruit parameters, um, they use medium unbiased parameters. Um, but in the stock synthesis, um, the starting po point is with the mean virgin recruitment. And uh, for the stock recruit parameters, um, they use the mean unbiased uh, stock recruit parameters. Um, so what's the impact of the differences in recruitment bias adjustment on the performance of estimation models? And how, how can we incorporate these two methods into our design of the work? Um, and I will talk about uh, this uh, in details. So after the co-comparison process, we actually moved forward with the um, analytical comparison process. The analytical comparison process starts with um, developing an operating model to simulate um, annual fish population and fishery dynamics. And then we apply um, the four estimation models to the simulated data from the operating model. And we decided the main structure of the operating model um, based on the findings from the co-comparison process. Um, it, it is a simple operating model with um, only one fleet and one survey for now. Um, and some of the true values of uh, life history of the um, stock actually were borrowed from the um, 2016 paper um, showed here. Um, and uh, so that is pretty much the base case for the um, operating model, which is the C0 um, in this study. And in addition to um, this, the ba base case, we actually also interested in quantifying the impact of recruitment variability, process error in fishing mortality, um, fishing mortality patterns, selectivity patterns, and recruitment bias adjustment on uh, performance of estimation models. So what we did is we uh, created a, a few more uh, cases. For example, when we are uh, examining the impact of recruitment variability, we incre increase the standard deviation of uh, log recruitment to from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. And we keep the other elements the same with the base case C0. Um, and then when we are um, checking the process error in fishing mortality, we basically generate uh, sarcastic fishing mortality deviations per um, iteration. Um, and when we, are, when we were uh, checking the fishing mortality patterns, we tried the roller coaster pattern, we tried constant fishing mortality pattern to compare with the increasing fishing uh, mortality, uh, mortality pattern from the base case. And we also checked the double logistic selectivity pattern um, in case eight. And uh, the last two cases are related to recruitment bias adjustment. So what we did is for case nine, we are actually mimic the method from a band model. We use the medium virgin recruitment and the stiffness um, in the operating model. And for the C10, we, are, we were actually mimic the um, stock synthesis method. So we use the mean virgin recruitment and stiffness for the operating model. And one thing um, I want to mention is we are afraid that if we use the um, standard deviation of recruitment as 0.2, we may not notice the difference. So here we actually set the 
um, standard deviation of recruitment to 0 0.6 for the recruitment bias adjustment cases. So case 9 and 10 actually need to be compared with um, case 2 instead of um, the base case. And uh, another um, thing I want to mention is about the fishing mortality pattern. We pretty much follow the approach from uh, Johnson et al. and Ono et al. Uh, papers. We used the yield over the fishing mortality curve for setting up the um, F low and the F high um, to set up the fishing mortality pa patterns. For example, when we are trying the increasing pattern, we set the um, fishing mortality start from F low to F high. When we're trying the roller coaster pattern, we were setting the um, fishing mortality increases from F low to F high, then it were um, decreases from F high to FMSY. And after setting up all the cases, uh, what we did is repeating the simulation estimation process 100 times. For um, each iteration run, we actually ger generate a new set of recruitment deviations and uh, catch and survey data. Um, and we are going to compare the estimates with the um, true values from the operating model um, over the 100 iteration runs. And here I want to mention two things. Um, so in this project, we actually fix quite a few uh, parameters at its true values. And uh, the estimated uh, parameters include uh, virgin recruitment, catchability of survey, and uh, um, selectivity parameters. Um, so we want to start estimates parameters one by one, so we know the source of differences in model estimates. Um, and another point I want to um, emphasize um, is the importance of standardized uh, inputs. So as I mentioned earlier, we observed the differences in source code, um, especially the selectivity. So because we observed that um, differences, we are able to manually convert our input settings and make sure the configurations um, are as similar as possible to reduce the bias from um, analysts and uh, make sure that when we compare the outputs from the estimates, uh, we can convert the value correctly and compare apples to apples. And within um, each case, we can compare the model estimates with the true values from the operating model. Um, and the quantities of interest include um, virgin recruitment, um, spawning stock biomass, fishing mortality, recruitment over time, uh, MSY, best reference points, SSB ratio, um, F ratio, and uh, um, accuracy of uh, stock status determination. So um, for, the, for the accuracy of stock status determination, we are basically compare the estimated um, stock status uh, with the, the true status from operating model, see whether it's overfishing or overfished. Um, and the accuracy value actually is the percentage of uh, iteration runs that successfully determined the stock status per case. Um, and for the performance merit criteria, we use the very um, common criteria, such as um, relative error and the medium relative error over 100 iterations. So for the relative error, we basically um, using the estimates minus the true values from the operating model and uh, um, use this residual divide by um, the true values from the um, operating model. So um, I hope you are uh, familiar with the individual part of the comparison framework we uh, developed. So um, I think it's time to show um, the, the results. So the first part of the results I want to show you is the median relative error in virgin recruitment um, from um, all four estimation models from um, all cases. Uh, by looking at this table, we can clearly see that the median relative error in virgin recruitment were really low for all estimation models. So it means that the virgin recruitment was accurately um, estimated in all estimation models with um, low bias. Mm, but we we can see 
a pattern that um, it seems like the magnitude of um, error in AMAC is slightly higher um, compared to the other three models. So we suspect that uh, there are some underlying assumptions from AMAC may be different compared to the other models. So we did an extra case to um, test it, and I will um, explain the results uh, later. Um, and for now, we are just go through um, all the similarities we found from this project. Um, and when we looked at the relative error in um, MSY best reference points, we found that all medium um, relative errors are centered around zero. Um, so the first column is relative error in MSY from different cases for different models. The second column is relative error in FMSY, and third column is relative error in um, SSB MSY. Um, and when we are looking at the results by um, by cases, so if we look at the first three C zero uh, to C two, it's recruitment variability cases. We uh, we can see that um, the range of relative error increased when uh, standard deviation of recruitment increased. And if we look at uh, um, the the uh, cases that are related to process error in fishing mortality, um, fishing patterns, and the double logistic selectivity patterns, we basically uh, didn't see any considerable differences uh, compare these results with the base case uh, results from C0. And uh, if we um, look at the last two cases, which are bias adjustment in recruitment, we, we did see a wider range of relative error, but it's because um, we set up the standard deviation of recruitment to 0.6 in these two cases. So they are need to be compared with C2. Um, so that's the reason why it has a wider range of relative error. But overall, um, all those findings are um, in line with our understanding. And uh, um, if we look at the relative errors in um, SSB, uh, recruitment, fishing mortality, uh, SSB ratio, and F ratio um, over time, we pretty much just see um, like they actually are really close to each other, very similar to each other. The medium relative error are around zero over years for all models. Um, they just share really similar relative error trends. It's actually hard to um, see individual trend here because they're um, just too similar to each other. And when we uh, looked at the accuracy in stock status determination, I actually didn't show um, the overfished stock status determination plot here because um, it's all horizontal lines for every model and every case. Um, it means that they were 100% accurate for all iteration runs. But when we were looking at the overfishing status determination um, by cases, uh, we found out the accuracy was sometimes lower than 100%. And we checked uh, um, this lower than 100% years. It happens only when the fishing mortality is really close to F limit. Um, so the estimation models get sensitive when um, the F over F limit is close to one. Um, it's a more like a digital issue. Um, but the temporal trend of accuracy from all estimation models remains high uh, positive correlations. They are really um, similar to each other. Um, so by far, you may ask, like, is that all we learned from this project? All estimation models just produce very similar, almost identical estimates when they are configured similarly. Um, the answer is yes, but that is uh, not the whole story. So now, um, oh, actually, uh, one more thing is the selectivity at uh, age. So uh, when we also plot the selectivity at the age. Um, it actually also shows almost identical estimates from um, all models compared with operating model. So here, the top panels actually shows um, the true and estimated simple logistic selectivity at age from the base case for landings and surveys. And the bottom panel of the pictures actually shows the true and estimated double logistic selectivity at age from um, the case eight. 
Yeah, so basically all the estimates are really similar to each other, but that's not the whole story of this project. We did find some um, fundamental differences among the estimation models, and we hope um, we can continue um, improving the stock assessment based on these findings. So the first difference is related to the slightly larger mag magnitude of relative error in virgin recruitment in um, AMAC. So we found that the AMAC produced slightly lower um, virgin recruitment compared with um, the other models under the base case. So we suspect that it's caused by the difference in initial numbers of age computation. Uh, what we found uh, was that the operating model actually computes the population, um, the initial numbers at age with consideration of initial fishing mortality. But in AMAC, um, AMAC actually computes the initial numbers at age with unfished equilibrium um, population. So uh, what we did was we actually conducted another case and modified the operating model. So it starts with unfished equilibrium uh, population like what AMAC does. So that's um, the additional case B. And uh, we um, just did the analysis and the results here um, shows that the estimated virgin recruitment from AMARC are similar to uh, with other models and with the um, operating model. So th this means that under the original base case, the estimation models that don't specify the initial fishing mortality rate will end up scaling the virgin recruitment downwards to match the numbers at H1 in model year one, and the estimation model will produce slightly lower um, bio, um, MSY best uh, um, reference points compared to the true values. And uh, we also found that there, there are different ways to compute uh, initial numbers at age in stock assessment models um, based on different reports we ran. So, for example, uh, stock synthesis actually clearly documented the potential options they have for computing um, initial numbers at age. I also um, saw multiple options from um, other, pack other pack packages that we um, didn't compare in this project. But um, the discussion on which option to prefer and why um, just remains scarce. So uh, we think more efforts from the science community are needed to discuss which option to use or to keep, um, especially if we, we want to limit the options in new model development. Um, but the good news is we found the, um, the difference in initial numbers at age computation and noticed it will make a difference in estimation results. So if you are doing the model comparison work and see difference in um, estimated virgin recruitment among models, um, this could be a starting point for you to do some um, diagnostics. And uh, another difference is um, related to the bias adjustment in recruitment. Um, here I just want to recall the fundamental differences we found through the code comparison process. Um, if you still remember when we look at the relative error in um, MSY best reference points or um, SSB over um, time, we saw that the results from the bias adjustment um, cases are actually um, shows very similar estimates among models. So, um, but that's not what we observed in the very beginning of the analysis. And I just want to share um, the process from where we found the differences to how uh, we solve the problem. So um, in the very beginning, we actually just applied recruitment bias adjustment to the base case operating model following uh, the methods from uh, BAM. So th that is um, the part um, in, in red in this formula. Um, what we did to the estimation model is uh, we simply switched the bias adjustment feature from off to on in BAM and uh, stock synthesis. But we didn't, we didn't do anything to AMAC and ASAP uh, because they haven't implemented the uh, bias adjustment feature. And if we directly plot the true virgin recruitment 
and the um, estimates, we will see um, R0 um, plots like this. Um, and you can clearly see that there, uh, the, the R0 from the stock synthesis is higher um, compared to the other models. And after the uh, discussion and diagnostics, we found out the, R, uh, the virgin recruitment from stock synthesis actually is representing the mean virgin recruitment. But the, vir uh, the R0, the virgin recruitment from the other models and the operating model here uh, are actually representing uh, medium virgin recruitment. So if we do some conversion um, to convert the mean values to medium values, we would get uh, similar results among the four models. Um, and if we um, look at the MSY best reference points, we saw that uh, we can see that only um, them actually shows really close to zero relative error um, in this case. Um, and we can see that uh, there are some uh, bias in um, AMAC, ASAP, um, and it's probably because um, they, do, they don't have the bias adjustment uh, feature. And um, so there are differences in um, estimates in MSY best reference points. And if we look at the um, SSB ratio and the F ratio over time, we can also clearly see that there are some consistent bias in um, AMAC, ASAP, and stock synthesis estimates. Um, so for us, we think the next step is to check whether we could apply ad hoc analysis in AMAC and ASAP um, to address the bias adjustment in recruitment to, um, to decrease the differences in estimates. Um, for stock synthesis, we are thinking about uh, whether we could find a way to convert the median parameters to mean parameters or uh, mean parameters to median parameters um, to see whether that will diminish the differences in estimates. So um, the group actually has done some uh, intensive communications and work to solve this problem. Uh, we have people doing literature reviews to see whether there are some existing guidelines for which value, values to um, prefer and why. We also have people doing um, independent exploration to um, create the conversion function. And the good news is uh, Chris Legal from the Northeast Fisheries Science Center has created a function to um, freely convert medium uh, virgin recruitment and stiffness to mean virgin recruitment and stiffness. And uh, um, here I just show the final um, outputs of the conversion here. Um, if you are interested in the logic behind this, please uh, feel free to uh, contact us. And this conversion functions actually also can um, convert the mean values to median values. So uh, what we did is we use the median uh, values as starting values in the operating model following the uh, BAM bias adjustment method. We also created another case um, that used this conversion function to convert the medians to means um, in the operating model following stock synthesis bias adjustment method. And then we um, plotted the uh, population dynamics from uh, these two methods. Uh, here is just a plot shows the equilibrium recruitment over F and the yield over F um, from three uh, different operating model um, data. data. Um, so the dots here actually shows the base case with no bias adjustment consideration. And the solid line actually represents two methods we use to do the bias adjustment. And uh, as you can see, the BAM approach and stock synthesis approach are identical. They are like just overlay on each other. So the message we, um, the, the lesson we learned here is the two methods actually do the same job. Um, the key issue is whether or not when we are doing the stock assessment uh, analysis, do we put the correct input values in the assessment model? So what we want is use median virgin recruitment and steepness for BAM and use mean values for stock synthesis. And when you're comparing the outputs from these two models, you also need to convert 
um, the values so you can compare um, apples to apples. Um, and with the correct settings, we actually obtained very similar estimates from uh, BAM and uh, stock synthesis, um, which is the uh, red box plot and blue box plot here. And then um, after that, we actually applied ad hoc adjustment in um, MSY calculation for AMAC and ASAP, and we also um, obtained similar estimates as well. So that's why you saw all the um, estimates from all the models are very similar to each other, um, but um, that's, but we actually um, observed the problem first and uh, spent quite a lot of time to solve the problem. And the key message is when fixing the st steepness in the assessments, um, use median steepness in AMAC, A ASAP, and BAM, and use mean steepness in stock synthesis, and also convert the estimates uh, before comparing the outputs from uh, different estimation models. So um, with the, the current, all the findings we have, we fear that we actually be able to answer all the four questions we aim to address in the beginning. And I will just quickly go through uh, each questions. So we identify the key features um, that need code comparison, and we think it's a very useful practice for developing operating model structure when you are comparing uh, multiple models. And uh, we think the table we listed um, earlier with the identified uh, common features could be um, used as a communication base for other age structure stock assessment comparison projects. Um, and also the framework, the process we uh, developed can be applied for other type of um, stock assessment comparison um, projects. And uh, um, we, what we learn is um, we think this is a very unique uh, process um, and it helps reduce the contamination by parameter misspecification or analyst effect. So we could configure the models as similar as possible to identify the fundamental differences among model estimates. And we also found that when the same data were um, analyzed and when the estimation model were configured similarly, the four estimation models actually produce highly similar and accurate estimates. So um, the fundamental mathematical attributes of the models are very similar to each other. Um, it is fine for different regions to use different models um, with, with their own choice, um, but as long as they explicitly explicitly document the assumptions made in um, the stock assessment. And uh, the third point is we actually found out there, are, there were some differences in the initial numbers at age computation and bias adjustment um, of recruitment among estimation models, but the overall differences were um, minor after doing ad hoc analysis. But we think um, definitely we need to have more studies or discussions to give guidance on how to set up multiple options for um, initial numbers that age computation and how to convert stock recruitment uh, parameters when um, analysts use bias adjustment in stock assessment. And with all the summary of the findings, I just want to uh, highlight that to our knowledge, this um, is the first study in the United States that compared the four age structure stock assessment packages through a very um, comprehensive source code comparison process and an analytical comparison uh, process. Uh, we definitely probably have more work uh, can be done, for example, making the operating model more generalized um, so it can be used to test uh, more cases and used as an independent model for uh, stock assessment model validation. And uh, um, we, we found out there were some fundamental differences uh, among models for bias adjustment in recruitment. Um, we think it's very important to clarify uh, which values were used in stock assessment, um, both inputs and outputs, um, whether it's medians or means, because uh, maybe um, the scientists doing meta-analysis are also using these values, so it would be good to um, let, let pe people who are doing analysis, depending on this um, data, know uh, what kind of outputs they are using. And uh, also, uh, we just want to, we hope that the identify the 
sources of differences can um, help us um, to have more discussions and development of future stock assessment models. And we hope um, the framework developed in this study could be um, further applied to other model comparison work, either um, domestic assessment or um, international um, analysis. And that's all. With that, I want to um, thank you for your patience to join, join us for this seminar. And I'm happy to take any uh, questions. Thank you, Bai. That was wonderful. I really appreciate um, everything, all the details, and uh, we're getting very useful, uh, wonderful feedback about the presentation. Um, I encourage everybody to take uh, a moment to to write down your questions, type them into the chat box, and uh, we have about 10 minutes uh, to answer those questions as best as we can. By, are, are you open to receiving emails as well with any questions that people might have? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, if uh, people are having questions, feel free to um, email me. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, any questions? Oh, okay. Here's one. Um, here's one. Bye. Great job. Have you compared the differences in uncertainty estimates among the models? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, but we may actually try that um, for um, for another case. But um, the current uh, for the current study, we haven't uh, we haven't checked that. Okay. Excellent. Here's another question. A very interesting study. Will there be a paper describing your work? Uh, sorry, I actually think I um, didn't hear the first part of the question. Oh, actually, it was a compliment. A very interesting study. Will there be a paper describing your work? Uh, yes. So we are actually um, just agreed on the outline of the manuscript. So we are actually writing um, the papers and hopefully it will get published this year. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, Let's see, any other questions? Actually, so far, no more questions. Let's give it another minute. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to remind people that we have recorded this webinar and that uh, it will be put on the library um, YouTube channel. It's the uh, Library Seminars YouTube channel for the NOAA Central Library. And we also have a page on the NOAA Central Library website specifically for library seminars where this presentation will be archived. So I'm still not seeing any more questions. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, Kristen, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, yeah, actually, I have a question for Bai if we still have a couple of minutes. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Bai, you, you noted that the operating model was fairly simple. I was just wondering if you have done any testing under more complex scenarios, um, you know, more than one fishery, more than one survey. Uh, that's a great question. Actually, um, we are actually continue testing different cases. So I have done um, some cases which related to um, we have two surveys um, and we haven't observed like differences in estimates. Um, yeah, but and also um, another point is we are actually trying to uh, make the operating model more complicated to test more um, case, cases. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, so Lisa, I think that's all for me. And um, just a reminder that our next uh, seminar will be the first week of August, August 6th. Excellent. Um, I do have actually one more question if you have a moment to um, answer that by. The uh, question yes. is, given the results of your analysis, do you think there is no need for four models possibly moving to one for standardized approach? Um, I think we definitely need a joint effort to um, create the next generation of the model. Um, so I, I believe uh, there is a group of people in our are having discussion on that, um, and I hope uh, the results, the implication we got from this study, can be delivered there. 
and see um, how people can um, can uh, make some joint effort to create the um, the new models. Excellent. Thank you. And here's another question. Are there any plans to compare results with more parameters estimated? Um, currently, we haven't done that, but uh, we we could try that. Okay. Um, let's see. And, th and that is actually it for today. So thank you so much. This has been really interesting. And again, I appreciate uh, Kristen Blackheart as well for presenting by and all the hard work that you've presented today. Um, for the audience, thank you for joining us for the library seminar. And everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.